Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're going to be taking it back to the basics and we're going to do a video lesson covering uh, basic Japanese sentence structure. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to learn how to form a simple sentence in Japanese. So the way we're going to go about with this lesson is we're going to be comparing Japanese to English pretty heavily here. So we're going to do that right from the start here. And so to get the idea of the construction of a Japanese sentence, we're going to compare it to that of an English sentence. So in the English language, the basic sentence structure is going to be subject, verb, object. For example, I drink juice. We see here that the first word in that sentence is I, which is the subject. The second one is drink, which is the verb. And then the third one is juice, which is object. So subject, verb, object. In Japanese, the sentence construction is kind of flipped in a way in that we pretty much have subject first still, but we switch the object and the verb. So instead of subject, verb, object, it becomes subject, object, verb, S-O-V. So instead of I drink juice, this would be basically I juice drink. And so saying that in Japanese would be something like Watashi wa juice o nomu. We have the word slash subject watashi, which is going to mean I. We have the word jusu, which is actually just um, the Japanese version of the word juice borrowed to sound the same basically. Uh, then we have the verb nomu, which means to drink. But wait, you might be going now, hey, what are you talking about? There's like two more words in there that you aren't pointing out. The sounds wa and the sound o. Well, similarly to how the English sentence construction uh, can get mixed around sometimes depending on who's talking or um, how stylistic we're being. The Japanese sentence construction can get mixed up too, especially if you're entering realms where there's like creative license. If you have characters on a book, uh, in a book, or on a TV show, or in a movie, sometimes they'll mix that around to sound kind of more stylistic. Maybe they'll say something like, killed him I did, as opposed to I killed him. When something like this happens, the Japanese language actually has an upper edge to the English language because it uses something we call particles. Those words that we have in our Japanese example sentence, watashi wa jusu o nomu, Wa and O are particles. So the English language doesn't have as many particles as the Japanese language does, but it does have some. They're just more commonly called prepositions. So prepositions, of course, are things that English speakers pretty much learn in grade school. But if you happen to have forgotten what uh, prepositions are or what they mean exactly, that's okay. Prepositions are words that basically denote that the word right after them um, hence the prefix pre because they happen or they appear before that word that they're going to be describing. They're going to be denoting that that word after them is going to have a relation with another part of the sentence. So for example, when we hear the English preposition slash particle, I guess, uh, from, we automatically get this idea of what the word right after it is going to be. It's probably going to be a location or a time or some entity that you got something from. And we also know something like how it's definitely not going to be a verb action. So yeah, you can see here how just by having the preposition there, you get a sense or idea of what the word right after it is going to be. Particles in Japanese work pretty much exactly the same way, except for modifying or describing slash denoting the word right after it. They're going to be doing that for the word right before them. So uh, technically they're postpositions as opposed to prepositions. And also, like I said, the Japanese language uses them more than the English language does. So they're going to be covering a wider range of word types. And of course, among those word types are things like the subject of the sentence, the direct object of the sentence, the indirect object of the sentence, etc. Which is going to now explain our first example sentence, I drink juice, or in Japanese, watashi wa jusu o nomu. We now know that the wa and the o, those are particles that are kind of denoting what the words right before them are. The particle wa is the topic marker, which is also coincidentally marking the subject of the sentence. So that means the word right before it is the topic slash subject, which means watashi, which is going to mean I, is the subject of the sentence slash the topic of the sentence. Additionally, the particle o is the direct object marker. So it's marking the thing right before it as the direct object, which is the word jusu, which means juice. And that makes sense, right? Because the thing that I am drinking or the thing that I drink is juice. So watashi wa jusu o nomu is going to be I drink juice. And so the Japanese language does have a decent amount of particles. Too many for us to go into all of them in this lesson, but we are gonna quickly point out three more 
just for the sake of how basic they are and how we're going to need them in the following example sentences. So another particle that the Japanese language uses is the particle ga, and this is actually going to be the subject marker. That might be a bit confusing because in our example just now, the particle wa was the thing that was marking the subject. That right there is what we call the topic marker, which is probably one of the most complicated concepts in the Japanese language for a uh, foreign speakers to adapt to, so we're gonna go into that a bit more in a few seconds after we cover these particles. The other two particles that we're gonna wanna know for the duration of this lesson are the particles e and ni, which are both used to uh, denote a location, usually a destination. So these two are basically the equivalent of the English particle slash preposition to, so to the library or to the bank. Uh, we're gonna be using it to the same effect as that. And just a little side note here, the particle ni can also be used um, for other functions, so just don't automatically assume that it's marking a location when you see it anywhere. It's going to have a lot of different meanings. And so finally, the last of the main word types here, the verb, um, that's actually going to be the word type that doesn't have any particle associated with it at all. And that's probably because the verb action or the verb word or whatever you want to call it is almost always going to appear at the end of a Japanese sentence uh, or clause. So there isn't really much point to have a particle associated with it if it's just always going to be at the end and we know that that's going to be there. Okay, so now we're going to go back to this concept of a topic. So this is a 100% unique thing to the Japanese language if we're just going to be comparing it to English. This is something that doesn't have an English equivalent at all, so it's pretty hard to grasp usually for English speakers trying to learn Japanese. But what it pretty much is, is just that, what the word means. It's the topic of the sentence. If we were to literally translate an instance of the topic marker wa appearing right after a word, some kind of noun word, blank wa, that would literally translate to something like speaking of blank or on the topic of blank. Uh, then you would just say whatever after that and complete the sentence. The important thing to note here is that the topic isn't the same thing as a subject, but it can be both the subject and the topic, but it can also not be both the subject and the topic. A sentence can have a topic, a subject, and an object. Our first example, uh, I drink juice, watashi wa jusu o nomu, is actually an example of it being uh, the topic being the subject as well, because we mark the subject I with the particle wa as opposed to just the subject marker ga, so it was acting as the topic and the subject. The topic of a Japanese sentence can actually even replace the direct object. For example, if we had the sentence terebi wa kodomo ga miru. This sentence is gonna literally translate to speaking of television, children watch, and then kind of like watch it, and the it being in parentheses. So if we were to break down the sentence right here, the first word is going to be terebi, which is going to be the word for television or TV. That is going to be the topic of the sentence because we see the, the topic marker particle wa right after it, which means it's denoting the thing right before it is the topic. So terebi wa, speaking of television or on the topic of television. Next up we have our subject, which is the word kodomo, which means children. This is the subject and we know it's the subject because it has the particle ga right after it. The ga is the subject marker, so it marks the word right before it as the subject. Kodomo ga, children is the subject of the sentence or kids is the subject of the sentence and since it's the subject that means it's going to be performing some kind of action and the action is actually the only thing we have left in the sentence which is the verb miru which means to watch. So you'll see here that the direct object marker o isn't in the sentence at all but that actually doesn't mean that we don't have a direct object. The direct object is actually terebi because if we were to interpret this sentence literally speaking of television children watch is the literal translation. We know that the thing that they're watching is is the television, even though that's the top of the sentence, it's also serving as the direct object. And so yeah, this is actually a perfectly valid sentence. We did mix around the general construction of subject, object, verb to actually be object, subject, verb, but uh, that doesn't break any rules. It's just kind of the general outline that doesn't necessarily have to be followed to be grammatically correct. The verb is still at the very end. Um, and everything else is still pretty much grammatically sound. So that's actually where we're going to end the discussion for the topic marker. Uh, like I said before, it's a vastly complex subject amongst uh, Japanese speakers and it continues to be debated uh, pretty much every day. Um, so we're going to stop there, that's all we need to know about it and we're going to move on now because what we have learned so far is pretty much all we need to learn to be able to form any simple Japanese sentence. So let's do that now. Let's practice using the things that we've learned in this lesson. So we are now capable of forming pretty much any simple sentence that involves 
um, that has a subject, a direct object, and a verb. Any combination of those three elements, basically. Uh, we are probably going to need the help of a dictionary for some vocab. Um, but yeah, so let's say I want to say uh, she went home. Look it up on our little dictionary here. We need the vocabulary terms she and home and went basically. We are going to have the words kanojo, which means she or the girl. We are going to have the word uchi, which means home. And then we are going to have the word kaeru, which means to return. So now what do we do? We're going to follow the basic sentence order that we know. Subject, object, verb. This sentence that we want to make actually doesn't really have an object. Uh, we have a destination, which is home, which will appear um, in place of the object, before the verb and after the subject. So which means the subject comes up first, which means that's kanojo. So kanojo, we are going to mark her as the topic slash subject with the particle wa. We are then going to put in the destination, uchi. So kanojo wa uchi. Next, we want to mark that destination. Uh, like I said, I introduced the particles ni and e before, so we can use either of those. We're going to go with the particle ni to mark it as the location slash destination. So kanojo wa uchi ni is basically going to be she to home, basically. It's kind of sounds weird until we finish it, so let's do just that. Now all that we have left is the verb action. We know verb actions don't need to have a particle associated with them. They don't have particles associated with them. So we just plug in the verb, and we know that the verb kaeru, which means to return, is the one that we want. I accidentally proposed that we make a sentence in the past tense, which is something a bit too complicated for us now. But uh, let's just say that the verb kaeru in its past form is kaerimashita. So, all together, kanojo wa uchi ni kaerimashita is going to be she went home or the girl went home. So that's subject, destination, verb basically. It's all good. Let's make another sentence. Let's say I saw a ghost. So this sentence that I'm proposing here has a subject, an object, and a verb. The subject is I, the verb is saw, and the object is a ghost. So now let's just plug that in in accordance to the Japanese structure, which is going to be subject object verb, so I go saw. So again, we'll use the word I, um, watashi, and then we'll have the wa, the particle that marks it as subject of the topic, so I am the subject of the topic. Then we have the direct object, which is ghost. Look that up on our dictionary. It's going to be the word yure, which is going to be ghost or spirit or apparition. Let's use that one. That's the thing that we saw. So it's the direct object, so we need to mark it as such with the direct object marker O. Then we end the sentence with the verb action that comes last, which is the verb miru, which means to see. Once again, I proposed a sentence in the past tense, which might have been too complicated, but uh, Miru, uh, the past tense form of that is mita. So, watashi wa yure o mita is going to be I saw a ghost. And what we're going to do in the final stage is we're going to drop the subject I, and uh, so that'd be watashi. And we're also going to drop the marker of it, of course, if it's not going to be there, the marker goes away too. So, it's just going to be yure o mita, and that's going to be saw a ghost literally, but it's going to naturalize into implied subject of I. So I saw a ghost and we're going to explain that um, in a bit why we did that. Our next example sentence that we want to make, the wall broke. Our vocabulary terms are wall and broke basically. So wall in Japanese is going to be kabe and then the verb to break is going to be kowareru. And so our sentence is then simply going to be uh, subject uh, then verb because there's no direct object. So subject kabe Mark that, let's use the particle ga to mark it as a subject. Kabe ga, and then the verb goes in there. Kowareru. Uh, once again, uh, I made a past tense sentence, so it's gonna be kowareta. So kabe ga kowareta is going to be the wall broke or the wall gave in. So yeah, pretty darn simple. Let's go through one more example sentence. We'll use um, ourselves as the subject again, I. And let's finally do a present tense sentence. So let's say, I will buy a computer. Once again, we are going to drop the subject I um, and the particle that marks the subject slash topic uh, wa, and we're going to explain that after we finish the sentence. So our computer is going to be computa, and that's just going to be the katakana version, which just means the Japanese is borrowing the English language word, um, not really making its own word that sounds different. And then the only other vocabulary term that we need, uh, by, is going to be the verb kao. So our sentence is then going to be, since we're not going to include the subject, that means the first thing is going to be the object, right? Because the verb goes last and there's no other option, so the object is first. So object is computa. Uh, then we have the direct object marker as always to mark it as the object o, computa o, and then the verb kao. Computa o kao is going to be 
I will buy a computer. Okay, so now let's explain why we dropped the subject when it was I in those two example sentences. Why did we do that? Why did we completely omit the subject of the sentence even though this whole lesson is about the three word type subject, object, and verb. So subject must be pretty darn important. Why did we get rid of it? The truth is doing this actually makes our speech sound more natural and not like it's straight from a textbook. How Japanese speakers frequently drop things like the subject of a sentence is probably best if we save it for another video lesson, but the kind of short answer is that subjects are frequently already implied based on the context of the conversation or what has already been said, so Japanese speakers tend to drop it because when you keep saying, I, I, I did this, I, this, I, this, it kind of sounds like you're too willing to talk about yourself and just being kind of self-important. And so that right there is a really cool exposure to how the Japanese culture influences the language right from the get-go, basically. You will definitely come to witness more instances of that culture influencing language as you continue learning Japanese, basically. Awesome, so now that we've learned how to construct a simple sentence, we can move on to making these sentences snazzier. So we're gonna wanna learn how to do things like adding adjectives and saying verbs that aren't just in the positive form. We wanna say don't do something, negative form and all that jazz. And so yeah, in the pinned comment below, I'll include links to the lessons that I would recommend you watching next if you want to continue um, trying to make better sentences. And of course, if you check our website, there's an index there of all of our videos, all 200 plus videos in case you want to just kind of free roam and decide what you want to learn next um, from uh, all those choices. Okay, so that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed your time doing so. If you'd like to express that, you can like the video, leave a comment below, or subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to support more of these video lessons or support more of these video lessons uh, being created more often or uh, support more types of videos, please do consider checking out our Patreon page and consider becoming a patron there. Also included on the screen right now are of course a bunch of links on where to find and follow us on uh, elsewhere online, including our official website. And lastly, check out our Discord server. We've got a community of hundreds of people learning Japanese um, just there. So if you're looking for somebody to voice chat with just to practice speaking Japanese, or you have a quick question that needs a quick answer, or if you just want to talk about uh, anime or music or manga or other Japanese things, learn Japanese.becausedreams.com slash discord. And with that, see you next time.